Bill, I want to talk about the fantastic HEAV conference coming up. I'm Diane Kraft from Child Diagnostics in Denver, Colorado. For those of you who don't know me, this year's convention is going to be so exciting. When I look at that lineup, I want to go to every single workshop. Vody Bachman's going to be there. Todd Wilson's going to be at a convention. Our convention favorite, Andrew Pudua, will be there. They all are so encouraging. I want to encourage everyone to come to the HEAV conference. There are people there that is just going to blow you away. Every subject, every need that we could think of looks like it's covered. Now, I've had the opportunity to speak at HEAV for four years, but this year, my longtime associate and conference representative, Pamela Gates, has worked with me for many years. She's going to be giving four of my workshops using the same slides I've always used for those of you who want to come and with new information also, because new things are happening all the time. So they're going to help make learning easier for your struggling learner that we call bright, hardworking kids who have to work too hard to learn, or sometimes even special needs. Whatever we, we say, it doesn't matter. We just know those are the children that are expending too much battery energy to learn. So we're going to, I want to remind you that showing parents how to work with their own child and become their child's own learning specialist, that's our specialty. And so we'll show you how to remove learning blocks such as dyslexia, dysgraphia and auditory processing problems at home very inexpensively. So we call it our Home Depot approach to learning disabilities. Now at the convention, we're not going to be the only one showing you how to work with children with learning glitches. I like to call them a glitch because glitches are correctable, just like we found when they call them disabilities. It's the same thing as a glitch, correctable. So we're not the only ones. Check them all out and see what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. <clears throat> so come to our booth, which we call the Diane Craft Right Brain Learning System. Why do we call it Right Brain? It's not just for right brainers at all. It's just that if the curriculum was working, curriculum is left brain. Then we, then we would be just fine. So we just use the alternative, we call them alternative teaching strategies. That's what it is. We just do right brain because it's, it is, it actually does, that's where the long-term memory is, that's what we're stimulating. So when you come to our booth, you're going to receive free advice from three certified learning specialists who will be there just to serve you and help you at the time. So uh, no matter what age, and pick up our free daily lesson plans to use also. Our product special at this convention is going to be 20% uh, off our all-inclusive foundational package composed of teaching videos and all the curriculum you need to correct reading, writing, spelling, and math problems at home. And of course, we always follow up. And again, just to tell you, there'll be many other good speakers there too. So just dive in and enjoy that convention. Pamela Gates is going to be there uh, doing workshops for us. Um, she is. Do you know which workshop she's doing? Yes, I do. Words when we think of learning disabilities, learning glitches, or we call them learning blocks. They're just four learning gates. There's no mystery to learning in that workshop. She's going to give you the solutions we've come up with that for the last 15 years and been working with families and have a great deal of success things parents can do at home. For example, we think of it as, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful, Sandra, if our kids came to us and came to the table to learn in the morning and we could see their battery right you know, in the front of their shirt, full battery, good day. So what if things have happened during the night or they got some chocolate or they got milk and they're allergic to it and without knowing it, their battery energy is down to here. Mm -hmm. But you're still treating them like the day before when their battery energy was full. So then we assume that they're not being cooperative that they are, they're just being lazy. In fact, we call it lazy, sloppy, unmotivated. Suddenly that day they just look, well, in reality, wouldn't it be nice to know that, whoa, this is the day that their battery energy is so low. So when they put their head on their book because they're reading so hard, then we know instead of saying, no, let's just do one more, we'll put our head on our book too and say, yeah, right, let's go to the park. This is a park day. Or, oh man, I didn't realize this is snack time. That are the clock. In other words, you let it give them a way of escape. So we know that in general, though, and I homeschooled my son. And then after that, we went into I went into the schools and uh, and taught these bright, hardworking kids who had to work too hard to learn in a resource room setting. I asked God to show me a completely different method, because if the old method had worked, they wouldn't be in pullout, would they? So we'd get these wonderful sixth and seventh graders that were testing at the second grade reading in Woodcock Johnson and such. They'd been worked with. They have good parents. I did this with my son at home 
home when I homeschooled him till he graduated. And what we said, what is it? We found out that because of an undiagnosed learning glitch, which is easy, you're going to learn in this topic, Solutions for the Struggle Learner, how you, with a little checklist, which we'll hand out to free for you, find out which of those learning blocks are, are, are evident. In other words, does your child have to use too much battery energy just to keep his eyes sweeping over the page to read? These are the kids that will rub their eyes all the time, or know how to read but don't want to. And they're not going to tell you, by the way, my eyes are skipping. We have some little color transparencies sometimes we put on because we have a school topic sensitivity syndrome, which means that when we look at a white paper, we can easily put the white in the background and we look at the dark only. When there's a scotopic sensitivity syndrome, that white in the background competes and causes it to be blurry. So when we put a blue transparency over, reading transparency, or a green, there are many other colors, but those are the 90% of the time they what they like, they'll say, oh, oh, the words aren't jumping anymore. And you say, wow. jumping? I didn't know they ever jumped. Why didn't you ever tell me that? Why they didn't is they thought everybody's jumped. They were just a little bit dumber and slower. That's why they had to look at was, and it was saw at first, and they'd quickly change it. So we show parents clues. We say, if a child's reading, and they read on for no or was for saw, but then the parents will say, oh, but that's only once in a while. We say, okay, do you do that once in a while? No, we don't. Because that shows us you see you're having to use so much battery energy. So it's just a clue. We look for clues and then we know how then we go to the correction, which is simple. But what we know is that even with writing, they say, well, they only write reversals once in a while. Let's say over age seven. You know, after we've taught it to them, we're not gonna we're not going to worry about it after that, before that. So when I say, do they sometimes write a B and D backwards or word? And they say, yes, but then they quickly erase it. You see, what they're telling us, if you see one of those symptoms, you know there are five other times they had to think about it, but it just didn't show. Do you see battery energy is mm -hmm. down here? So his brother, who can copy something from the board, and we love copying. I love the method of copying to learn. It's wonderful for a guy who doesn't have a dysgraphia or a dyslexia. So his batteries is full, he gets it done. This guy gets this much done and goes to the bathroom or feeds the dog or, you know, dog gets fed very well. So when, when, when this is the one we say, but if you would just try harder, you can't put in more battery in it. You see, the, the, so all we do is show the parents the symptoms we've seen in the kids that if they were formally tested, they would be able to tell, but that's, of course, $1,800, and we can really do that at home. Mm -hmm. So once we find out eye tracking's out, we do exercises to put them in. So and we've always seen the reversals go away in writing and in reading. So one of the other classes is called Smart Kids Who Hate to Write. But this isn't like, see, Andrew Pudua does the most wonderful job of teaching writing. I love it. So we use that all the time. But sometimes these guys actually are reversing. And when they reverse, we say, well, we're going to put them on the keyboard. But, you know, you can reverse on the keyboard, the G and B, you know, it just happens. We, what happens is they don't have a strong internalized midline or plumb line. So they also have, uh, we've had even people from drivers, uh, it's called Master Drive in Denver, where they teach the 15-year-olds how to drive. And they really need to have them have internalized midline, know where they are, left, right, you know, not just looking at their watch when they say left, which no one wears anymore. So we have had in their practice many years, and Pam has seen this too, Pamela, that, uh, that when oftentimes the master's drive, people will send them to us and they'll say, you need to do that funny writing aid exercise with them because then we found they always stay on the right side of the road, they can pass, they can t you can say left, right, it just takes a few months. But you see, if you knew that, you could incorporate that in your teaching day at home, you've taken care of one entire learning gate that could be a problem. The other thing is we need writing to be a proper learning gate because when we hear a lecture, we need to do two things at the same time. Hear the lecture and take the notes, right? Mm -hmm. If there's a disconnect between here and here, which is what dysgraphia is or a writing glitch is, whatever we call it, it's, it's a disconnect. 
And so what we do is we reconnect that. And then later on, I'll hear from them in college, Mrs. Kraft, I can take notes and I don't have to record all my notes anymore because I can think and write at the same time. So you see all of these little glitches can, and then we have the most wonderful one that everyone will love. And I remember for a long time, Pam said, I can't do this, this is too detailed. And yet I said, oh, but we're asking the parents to follow that program. She said, oh, you're right. And she does a marvelous job of it. You're going to enjoy hearing the biology of behavior. So we have the four learning gates, the visual, the writing. We'll talk about the auditory in a second. But one of the most puzzling ones is when their body chemistry is upset. And it can look like they have a learning disability or glitch. It can look like it's when they, like they are trying. Remember something one day and the next day it's like you didn't say it. And we always say to parents, there are the three most useless words. Don't you remember? Because <laughs> if they remembered, you'd notice, wouldn't you? <laughs> so, of course, they don't remember. But why? Are they really not trying? Are they just, you know, not exerting the effort? Or is there something wrong going upset in their chemistry? And we say, well, there's, tell us physical clues. If they had thrush as a baby, we know that then later on, that spore is in there, and then if they're eating a little too much sugar, which is pretty much our, our society, or if they've had a lot of antibiotics, or if they've had, mom had antibiotics in utero, so they were exposed in utero, we know they tend to have then that yeast and fungus overgrowth, and that creates noise in their head. And they'll tell you, it's like my thoughts are racing, or like you know, static in our head. And so it's so hard. Again, so much battery energy is being used just to sustain focus. So sometimes people will say, I know it's not a, because my child can play video games for hours. They say, yes, because video game energy, don't they? Engage you like crazy. Mm -hmm. Math does not do that. It takes energy from you to engage math. Math doesn't engage you. And he said, that's how we determine if that battery is low. And we can fill it up. And for that, we put on our nutritionist hat. And Pamela is a tr nutritionist also. She went to the same training at, as I did, certified natural learning, excuse me, certified natural health professional. And so she knows too. What we do is we, it's real common. Maybe many of you have used it. We just put in good probiotics. We do a three month program, one week at a time, always checking with the child's doctor, of course, to make sure everything's okay. But we get good probiotics and start planting that good bacteria back in. Because once the antibiotics have cleared it out, if we don't put it back in, the sugar and carbs that we naturally have, just keep it, keep it going. Mm -hmm. I love this especially for teenagers who suddenly want to go in the room all the time and be quiet, be quiet and all by themselves and listening to music. Are those who are surly, are unhappy, are kids who have meltdowns. I have so many wonderful testimonies from, I keep thinking of, of, of one Zach, who his mother, she said at age 11, he had such sensory problems that when she would try to go into the bathroom just to take a shower, he would stand outside and cry. And he'd had multiple ear infections. Dr. William Crook, in his book, um, Help for the Hyperactive Child, says that 85% of the children who go on later on to have ADD or ADD-like symptoms or depression oppression, meltdowns, hyperacusia, noises bother them. They're telling you their nervous system is in disequilibrium. And we can get them out of disequilibrium by, like we use Dr. Michael Gershon's research, the second brain. The gut is the second brain. The neurotransmitter is we know that 95% of the neurotransmitter serotonin, which is so powerful. Serotonin is the feel-good neurotransmitter. Helps you focus. It's what Ritalin actually just recirculates in your body. And, and we use it in all antidepressants, but it's really the natural thing. Serotonin is made in the gut. It's manufactured in the bowel. So when we have a lot of antibiotics, or a lot of steroids, our early use in utero, we know that we've accidentally messed with the nervous system. 
can be easily taken care of. We put in one week good probiotics, next week a good antifungal, we add the oils. And so we got a, a note from Zach's mom and she said, I can't believe it. She said, he is, he's now going to birthday parties. I can oh, shower by myself. He'll go in the public bathroom if we're close by. And another mom, we have a picture on our website on sensory processing kids. She said, a picture has a picture of her son in her, with you know just looked like a little four-year-old playing in the sand barefoot and she said he wouldn't even touch sand before we got his little gut stabilized oh so that's God. yeah one of the learning blocks that we just you see how easy that is it's just information isn't it once you have the information how easy it is to go to the health food store or talk to the doctor always first but the you know we've talked to plenty of doctors now we know normally what they're going to say is yes that's now this has now gotten to be quite well known dr trowbridge and so many of them have uh, made that well known so that's that third gate and then she's going to talk about the fourth gate talk auditory, auditory processing problems and memory <laughs> we do have a question from from a viewer though um uh, Nicole wanted to know which workshop or workshops will have new information that hasn't been presented in pre previous years. Okay. Yes, that is, Nicole, that's called auditory processing and memory problems. You're going to learn something in there that will just, I think, delight you, and it would be material we'd like everybody to know. There are 10 auditory channels. So we're going to tell you, show you and give you a handout in that workshop. In Pam's workshop, you will be getting a handout where you'll get the 10 channels for auditory processing processing and how you can determine which one is out by their symptoms of the child, like the child who's saying what all the time. Okay, we call that a receptive language problem. You mm. see, you could pay a lot for testing and say they have a receptive language problem and they, these are the services they need. And we're for that. We're not against anything. We love it all. Any way that helps your child is wonderful. We're just giving one, we call it alternative teaching methods. This is what I did with my students in school so I could get them out of my uh, extra needs program and go into the every other kind of program that they could do get to do what they want to do and learn things so in the this is auditory processing and memory is going to give you every single channel expressive language sometimes we have kids who don't say what they want they they ask you ask them a question and there's a such a long pause you could eat a sandwich between the time you ask them the question and you get the answer Remember, there's three parts to the brain, and in all of these workshops, we're going to show you how you at home can reconnect these parts of the brain. Left, right, which is where our reversals come in. Top down, which is our centering and nervous system. Those are the kids that have to have everything real quiet around them for everything to be okay. They don't have a strong midline. And there's back front part of the brain. The back is the receptive part of the brain. The front is the expressive. So doing midline exercises, which I just, I'm so grateful that God has made it so simple. There are many other ways to correct this, but we know that not only do our muscles, of course our brain tells our muscles to do that things, we know that. But what we don't know is the muscles train the brain. This was originally discovered about in the 1960s when they had some babies who had what they call in utero brain bleeds basically strokes. So they had speech issues, couldn't use part of their hands. What do they do? They began to do, they found there's lots of stretching you can do, but when you deliberately cross the midline with the muscles, the brain crosses the midline. When we deliberately do exercises that are back to front, those kids who have a short hamstring, they're walking on their toes, we deliberately open that up and they, they express it. What one, one mom said, she's like a chatty Kathy now. Where's the off button? You know, before she knew what she wanted to say, but things didn't come out. And for the midline, we do that very powerful, the centric writing aid exercise that takes 15 minutes a day, crayon and a piece of paper. That's the only expense you have. And that, that we have had with speech teachers using that because they said they stopped stuttering then. Because the stutter is the left brain is like New York, pieces, 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 pieces. The right brain's like Hawaii, it's all right, we're okay. And so we need to get them into that right brain, which is why we call it right brain. And so, and we've even had kids who start um, 
bike riding. My, oh, we have a videotape on if you want to join our Brain Integration Therapy group on Facebook. These moms help each other so much. And we have a, a videotape of an 18-year-old doing that riding aid exercise because he said he can now make his three-pointers in basketball. So anything you can do, yeah, you connect that, that top bottom. Many coaches do this. So it isn't God good that he gives us just exercises to reconnect the brain. And if we didn't see, yeah, I couldn't have used this in school if I didn't have testable results because they're tested with Woodcock Johnson and the, the uh, psych evaluations, the beginning of the year and the end. If they wouldn't have seen results, I couldn't have spent any time on this. But instead, I began giving workshops in the schools. Not because I knew so much, because God put me in, uh, in places where people smarter than I was. And I learned from them. But I'm grateful for knowing that. So as we're, you're going to learn in there, Nicole, not only are there 10 auditory channels, the kids who can't pull up their thoughts, are the kids who can't order sound, so they can't tell a story in order at all, and they are ordering sounds to read. All of those auditory channels we're going to talk about how to correct at home. First, how to identify, and then how to correct. And then we have something in there that we added. We put on our nutritionist hat, and we're going to talk about lecithin for auditory memory. We found out that um, people with Alzheimer's have no acetylcholine. And it comes from lecithin. It's our two favorite words, less and thin. And less and thin, you can get anywhere. You can put it in peanut butter. You can put it in oatmeal. And uh, if you put it in Lucky Charms, I'm not sure you'll get anything out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the sugar that you can see. We are, we're trying to reduce that. But anyway, we're going to look at the uh, research and Dr. Jacqueline Story's research on why she said this is what runs in families. ADD, ADHD, dyspraxia, and dyslexia runs in families that are low in the polyunsaturated fatty acids, of which acetylcholine is one. So we're going to show you just some things you can do at home. And you'll want to do them yourself, you and your husband. And uh, words will come easier to you. And uh, it just settles down the nervous system. So that's what's going to be special about the auditory process and memory because it works not just for kids but for adults. Do you have this health information in written form? It is challenging to remember it all and it really is. <laughs> it's a lot you mean to you, learn. you didn't get it, Terry? <laughs> Because we know we give a lot of material. It's like like uh, drinking at a, a you know, what do they call it, a fire station, so a hose out of a fire hose. And we know that. So we send that home with them. So you'll have the checklist at home you can look at. You'll have the, uh, which of the auditory channels and the correction. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong here? <laughs> of course. No, sorry. That's just an overview just to help you to know. That there are answers, and that's the number one thing we want you to know. There are answers, they're easy, they're inexpensive, and they absolutely are effective, and we have many parents who will be able to help you with that. But sure, we have um, the health information is actually, even though it took a long time to learn, it will be your least expensive product if you want to buy it at the booth. It's like $27 for a three-month program. So try to see a nutritionist for $27. Or we give you the majority of that in that class, the biology behavior, in the handout and in the talk. We're, we're very interested in putting things in your hand that you can use right away the next day at home and not have to uh, take a loan out for anything. So, <laughs> so the, the class will have, we have um, uh, slides with all of this on. You see, now you're just getting it with words, and that's just going down through your big toe. But the slides will ha will hold, and the handout will hold, or you can buy a product and it'll hold, or you can email us and we'll help you. Tell us the age of your child and what's going on with them behaviorally or focusing or anxiety. Oh, man, anxiety in kids is something we're so grateful we'd have some answers for. And let us know, and then we'll direct you. And if we don't have the answers, we'll direct you to the people that we have found. They have answers that also work. So oh, hopefully. Okay. You okay, Nicole? <laughs> what is that? That, was, that was Terry. Yeah. So Nicole says, by all, um, Let's see if that's up there. She says biology of behavior was incredibly helpful for her family. So I believe that's that's one that uh, we're doing this year as well, right? You are doing that talk. I would say, I always think, normally that's a standing room only talk, but um, I always think people needed to stand more because if anything is life changing right away, 
See, all these other, getting at the, the learning processes, by the end of the year, we expect them to be 90% gone. But the biology behavior, we can, uh, often in a week, they'll say, I can't believe it. He slept through the night. He didn't wet his ass, or he, he had a meltdown and didn't destroy everything. Or he went from seven meltdowns to three only, or none. Or like with her little Zach and the anxiety. Oh, I can't tell you. You know, we pray about all of our kids that we, we work with, and everybody does that sees families. We're not the only ones who pray. But we always do. And so when we get these wonderful heart heartwarming reports that they, the child can now walk in the sand or he doesn't flap his hands anymore. I love working with kids who have an autistic label or yeah. Asperger's label. And the reason I call it a label is what if we get rid of the symptoms? Then what do we do with the label? Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's just a cluster of symptoms of their sensory system being overloaded. I just wrote an article that called, it's called What Happened to Asperger's Syndrome? Because they no longer use it because now they, uh, it has been put into the autism um, continuum. And we know then that often the parents of kids with, wonderful kids with Asperger's are really working too hard to find uh, things that will help them. So many of them are bringing them home. Remember we said 37%, it appears from the HSLD survey, if I'm quoting them right, and I, this is what I believe I'm quoting correctly, um, the new families who are coming into uh, homeschool say, it's because their children, like you said, Sandra, so well, aren't being supported at school. And it, a lot of them have what we call Asperger's-like symptoms, which are, um, you know, they're, they're bright, they're capable of doing all the work. They almost always have a dysgraphia. That's easy. Easy one. That midline area, that's, all, that's easy. Even though it seems hard for them, that's easy to correct. But what the hardest one is, is they, um, they're, ang they're so anxious because they are so focused on the detail and need to keep their life pretty rigid so that they're, uh, they're not out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I tell a story in there about how when I was a teacher in school and uh, we, took mid we would take lunch and duty. And I would stand there and I'd watch. And I loved my, my children who had Asperger's-like symptoms or Tourette's-like symptoms because when we would come into the classroom and we did the midline things, and even the psychologist said, they don't tick. They don't they engage. So in other words, it, midline settles down the nervous system one of the ways. So anyway, I would see them and they would get their food and then they'd have to choose. Do they choose that table with boys that they know they're probably going to be made fun of because they can't quite keep up with the conversation? They are, do they choose that quiet table and just read a book? And then we watch them in the uh, playground doing the periphery, uh, walking around the fence. And they're thinking, you know what, I can get them to read. I can get rid of dyslexia, dysgraphia. I can do all that, but my heart breaks that. How can I help them emotionally? And now we found, again, the nutritional things. If you can believe it, they just, it, they're now finding it's all in the gut. I had a, um, the opportunity a couple of times to teach at uh, at uh, University of Arizona with uh, Temple Grandin, as you know, who has, uh, has written several books on autism. I always felt amazing that I was even there, asked to speak in company like that, but they were maybe desperate. And so I did. And so I talked to them about the gut connection. And James Adams, who is now the, the professor there and head of the autism research and Asperger's research there, is a wonderful man. And he is now, his whole focus is the gut and how that creates the anxiety levels and the SI that look like Asperger's. And wow. but when I, even in my my um, setting here at, in consultations, I would have moms who bring their child and she would say at the end, you didn't say anything about autism? And he said, no. She said, look at how it got rid of all the symptoms. No flapping. They have speech. We talk about Dr. Houston's research where he uses enzymes. So these guys can, they're really what they call it, um, our, our gal from Boulder who has written her book on the kids with starving brains, she said what happens is they eat the food, but because something compromised their gut, early antibiotics, maybe an immunization that didn't work the way it should, something compromised their gut so they can no longer make use of that food 
And so they all have bowel, tend to have bowel problems. And so what happens, they can't make use of the food, so their brains are acting as if they're starving. Their nervous system, the myelin sheath, doesn't get that fatty coating. So they startle, and noises and everything bothers them, and they will act a little more robotic. And all of that is from the gut. So his whole research, I was so thrilled, he has now gotten a grant to study just the gut and because he has an Asperger's child himself. And so flapping all those nervous system issues we're going to talk about. And I'm just so happy. And again, otherwise, if, if, our, if ours, we go at a certain level as we can as nutritionists, if we see the changes, we're just wonderful. If we see 70% changes, maybe you want to see an integrative physician and have just a couple and give them a list of names of people and just a couple more things tweaked. You know, maybe the copper's too high, the zinc's too low. We can't tell that. We don't do blood tests. Mm -hmm. We just treat the gut. But that's what James Adams is doing too. So it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's just the most fun in the world. That's amazing. Um, so we have Jamie Sykes. She says, my mom has some form of dementia and it came on quickly. My brother has dyslexia as well. And my husband my son has dyslexia and I believe dysgraphia and dyscalculia. And he is seven and still struggling with three letter words. He doesn't so, have a question, but <laughs> sounds like you've been sounds like you've been dissed, right? Dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not that's not scary. Um, you can you can take care of it. For the first of all, um, I want to have you look up Dr. Abram Hoffer's work. Abram, A-B-R-A-M, Hoffer, H-O-F-F-E-R. He's a physician concerning what they call early onset dementia. Otherwise, Google, Dr. Google will help you. Google B12 deficiency and early onset dementia. And uh, there is a book by Sally um, Polochek and her husband, and it's called... Could it be B12? I buy that by the by the boxes, that book. Could it be, at first I give it to every health professional I go to because it's not something they learned well in medical school. And B12 is, a, it's, it is the nervous system and it is the memory. Also look into lecithin, L-E-C-I-T-H-I-N. Remember lecithin, our two favorite words. But could it be B12 by Sandy Polochik and um, Dr. Abram Hoffer's work on early onset dementia. And good for you for not accepting that as a final answer. Number one, God says, and Jesus came and healed them all. We're standing in line for that one, the healing all. There's nothing that's too big for him. And then sometimes he leads us to natural things, doesn't he, when we pray. And that's what, so. So check that out. Continue to end. If you come to the convention, you'll go to many booths and ask about your children. When you come, be sure to mention the dyslexia and dysgraphia and come to Pam's talk on um, the, is it dysgraphia? I call it, we sometimes we call it smart kids who hate to write. We have to see what's our title. It's, is it dysgraphia? And then in there, if you come to that class, she will show you how to do the exercise that people, if they come to the booth without the class, will have to pay for that. But if you go to her class, we'll hand out everything you need there so you can go home, and that afternoon you can correct the problem. Now, not your husband's handwriting. No, no, we leave our husband's handwriting just the way it is. <laughs> but, yes, it'll be, you'll get every, and we love that class because when they come in, we know we are giving them something that, that uh can often they can often spend a lot of money going to mm -hmm. OT. Do again, not against OT. We love it all. It's all good. But that's what we do. Ann Miller, she's our our president. Oh, man, and I love Ann Miller. Um, oh. She says, Diane, you so helped my dyslexic son. Um, and as an adult, he still takes his fish oil. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and the first time she heard you speak, she cried through the whole workshop, wishing that she'd had that information when her six boys were all still young. Oh, and my, I'm just so grateful for you. I just see your pretty little face in front of me when, when I hear your name, and I just feel warm all over. I remember you being in that talk. How embarrassing you were. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> you were so cute in there. You were, came up afterwards and you talked to me and your heart was all filled up and you had become to HEAB, which has been a pleasure every single time and just been wonderful. And it was so I'm so glad. Thank you so much for saying that. And you know what? Good for him for taking his fish oil. Isn't that being talked about a lot more lately? Don't we read everywhere about fish oil and DHA and the long chain fatty acids? So you see, isn't it nice and to be right for so long? <laughs> Have your child say, yes, I'm still doing that. <laughs> Um, Jamie, uh, she was the one who previously she was sharing about her, the struggles in her family. Uh, she says that her son doesn't have any signs of autism. Can the dietary changes still help him with the three Ds? My mom does have the B12 deficiency. Unfortunately, she is in Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma has stores, I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I think. I think she just isn't able to come to the uh, the convention this oh, year. Oh, I hear you. Okay, sorry. I didn't catch that. I was thinking of where to get the B12, and I thought, I'm thinking less of things in Oklahoma. So I didn't follow that train of thoughts. Pardon me. So, okay, you just go right ahead and email us. Um, it's on our website. Otherwise, it's just craft at ecentral.com, just the word craft, and then the letter E. C E N T R A L dot com. Just email us and can give us these kinds of things. We spend all day answering emails and telling parents this go to this author for that. Or if you miss the class, then we'll send the. Uh, and I know you also have the handouts, won't you? On the, your mm -hmm. HEAV, will have the handouts, and HEAV will also have the um, the talk, right? So yes, you can get the talk. You'll be able to to after the uh, convention, you'll be able to buy the MP3 recordings. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they're perfect. They're very clear. I would do that. Then after you do those two things first, get those wonderful products from HEAV. And then after that, if you have questions, then email us because you'll have a real basis of knowledge. It will help walk you through it. Yes. Okay. So Desi says, are there resources for older students, college level, who still struggle with reading? Still struggle for college kids who still struggle with reading. I would imagine that that college, are we talking community college or four-year college? What have they decided? Or you don't know. I'm not sure. Sometimes okay. I'm just trying to assume from there that it might be reading comprehension because generally to get into college, you have to have, you know, passed enough tests to show that you are reading on level, at least recall, word, word calling on level. So I'm thinking it's word reading comprehension. Let me tell you what I did just recently on this, and it might help you. We had um, a, a grandson who was wanting to get into, wanting to take the ACT to, for college entrance, but his reading comprehension all the way through had been low. And so we worked with him. And he made, from his first to second, an eight-point gain, ended up having a 22, and got 31 in reading. I could have fallen over. We have a little videotape that we're going to put on our Facebook. We're glad to send it to you. It's just called um, ACT Test Prep improvement and and um, if you, you don't get that just go ahead and email us and we'll give you that connection we can put it on um, HEAV's uh, Facebook too if you'd like but sure. what we did is we have I think it's 10 minutes where we interviewed him and I said Keith you made such a tremendous improvement in your reading before we would just try to read the uh, passages and I'd show him how to read and he's, he couldn't understand it. So we started doing, we call it our reading comprehension training. I have an article, free article on that on my website called if you, for reading comprehension. We show them how to take the words they're reading and make a movie in their head as they're reading. When I first did it with Keith, we did it, um, I sat next to him and you know the, um, I think it's uh, Admiral McLean who has that book out, First Make Your Bed, about he was uh, the, the um, SEALs, the Navy SEALs leader, and he's talking about how to make real men. So first make your bed. And so we would read that book and I would read a sentence about, you know, there a man came in and was looking at the the painting on the wall and it talked about how disheveled he was. So I said, we stopped and we made a picture. And then I'd read another sentence that we made a picture. You can hear it. So we sat shoulder to shoulder. He's like six foot five. It was his shoulder a little long, taller than me. And so we, we would read this stuff and make pictures that anybody would watch that. They would say, that takes too much time. 
But this is exactly what I did with my sixth, seventh, eighth graders. They couldn't even get jokes. I would take jokes, mini mysteries from Remedia publication, mini mysteries, and we would read a little bit at a time, stop and make a picture. After a while, I could read a whole paragraph. Then they could make a picture and tell me about it. Then the whole story. Well, that's what I did with Keith. We went all those steps. All it is, talk about an inexpensive way to do it, but it's amazing how it changes. So he, when I, in the interview, I said, Keith, what are the things that you think changed so from your first two ACT tests, which he said were not even a score he wanted to show anybody, and to actually making, oh, well, I think we said, a 14-point gain in just reading and then overall A point. And so he said, it was so cute, he said, first of all, I want to tell you I prayed the hardest I've ever prayed in my whole life. <laughs> they said, well, I appreciate that, but he said, frankly, Kate, everybody prays. <laughs> so what else did you do? <laughs> in other words, isn't that, it's like, you know, there's no atheist in a foxhole. So in other words, so I said, he is, that was so sweet. He's a little worship leader in his, uh, in the school, but anyway, then he said, you know what, it's when we started making pictures that it got so easy. In fact, he said, I think, you know how in ACT they have a, a very fairly easy passage, which means it's a regular story you would read. Then they have a passage from like social studies. Then they have a passage like from a chemistry book, you know, so in other words, they give you, you know, easy, medium, hard. And he said, this whole test, they made a mistake and put in all easy stories. Oh. I said, sure they did. <laughs> For him, you see, it was easy. So what I would say is if you don't find the reading comprehension uh, page title, uh, that, that uh, article on my website, email me and we'll send it to you. I actually even have a video in the Teaching the Right Brain Child uh, video. It, we demonstrate how I did this with my 6th, 7th, 8th graders, but you can just pick it up from the article too, how to do it, because once they learn, and see we do this with our kids with autism and Asperger's, how do you, they get jokes then, because otherwise the jokes stay in the left brain is just words, mm -hmm. and they don't get it, and everybody else did. Jokes you only get when the words convert to the picture side of your brain. By doing those exercises, we light up the picture side of their brain. We do essential fatty acids because that's what the corpus callosum is made of, 60% fat. And then we do the exercises of I read to them and they look up because the physiological movement of the eyes up lights up that right brain. And we make movies longer every time. And they can... They get jokes. It was so fun to see at the beginning of the year the, ha the haphazard answers they gave me. And at the end of the year, they were like Sherlock Holmes because they could see it. So that's for the college student. Wouldn't that be a nice college uh, freshman study uh, course to do? That would be. Thank you so much for, for sharing all that. Um, Desi, I hope that helps out. And she did, by the way, while, while we were talking, she did say that it was community college and yes, the issue was comprehension. So we get that right. <laughs> All right, we have Cheryl here and she says, my son has ADD, anxiety and OCD. Would B12 and omegas help him? Um, of course, but they, we don't want to start there. We want to start in the gut. And so uh, come to Pam's biology behavior, and we're going to we, we're going to give you the first part. It's an eight week um, introduction of supplements, and that we do it for three months. But we're going to start with the gut. But yes, so B12 and the fish oils are great for um, someone with early onset Alzheimer's for sure, and it doesn't hurt anybody else. But we need to be a little more targeted, and we need to know that, especially the OCD and anxiety, that almost always read Dr. Trowbridge's book, The Undiagnosed um, Illness. Dr. Pro, do we know um, the who is the uh, quarterback uh, from Roger Staubach, the quarterback from the Texas um, hmm? Cowboys? Many years ago, he tells a story in there that his wife was in and out of mental institutions for 20 years with intractable depression, OCD, and anxiety. In the hospital, they gave her electroconvulsive therapy. So she, in other words, she'd get very depressed, very OCD, very anxious, closed all the windows, all this drapes, and they'd 
take her in. She would have um, electroconvulsive therapy. She'd be okay for a while, and then it would come back. This went on for 20 years until she went to Alabama and saw Dr. Trowbridge, um, John Trowbridge, T-R-O-W, B-R-I-D-G-E, is available in all um, libraries. She saw him, and he said, Hey, did you have antibiotics or steroids a lot in your life? She said, oh, I had sinus infections all the time. She said, I think what looks like a mental illness is really a physical illness. So he began treating her, and that's where we got our protocol from him and from Dr. Crook and from Dr. Perlmutter, who's a pediatric neurologist. We got the protocol of always starting with the gut first. So in that program, you're going to learn to plant good probiotics, and we give about three different brands just because not every brand is uh, refrigerated in the way we need it to be. It's bacteria. Think hamburger. We've got to keep it you know, cold, three times a day, and then the next week we keep that up and we're going to add an antifungal to start breaking down those colonies. And you can just almost like they can start taking a deep breath. So, and then eventually I think week five is adding the fish oils like Anne says her son still takes and, and many people do. And um, so, and that's the program. In there, I think it's probably week three, we add a product that has B12 in it. Reason we add one new thing, we have to, because we eat so poorly, that's the way our America is, um, we don't, and if, you, if your, your constitution is strong, you don't have to take supplements. But if you have fallen into a hole of some sort, then we need supplements to dig you out for three months, and then you can hopefully get this all through food. So it's in there, but she'd be much more benefit from going through that. Otherwise, the fish oil and the B12, it doesn't have a landing place, nothing to work from. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, Desi says, thanks. It helps a lot. So <laughs> you Good. help her a lot with the with the reading issue. Um, and I do want to point out, Ann, Ann Miller earlier said that how much she loves your servant's heart. And, uh, that, that's oh, what makes the AV run, too, is, is lots of servant's hearts. I said, hope she knows I was kidding about the crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's just so fun, such a fun person to kid around. <laughs> Excuse me. And Cheryl says, thank you for, for all of your your insight into the into the B12 and omegas. And uh, let's see here, we have one more comment here. Oh, this is, uh, this is just someone tagging their friend because you're live right now. And apparently she was talking about you earlier this week. So she was telling her friend that you're live. <laughs> yeah. So good. let me ask now if, if anybody who's watching now has any more questions that you'd like to sneak in here for Diane, please put them in the comments and we'll answer them live if, if we can, if we catch you before we sign off. But I also want to, I'm, I'm really looking forward to these workshops. I think they're, they're, they're needed. They're they are. Needed. And in fact, there's one last one that actually, if you only came to one, this would be enough. It's a photographic memory power. It's showing you how to help your child develop his photographic memory. So for kids who can't spell, they can spell forwards and backwards in just an hour. Just show them. How. It's so wonderful the way the brain works. I remember I had Jeremy, a second grader, and he was in my class, and he couldn't he couldn't spell anything. So I made is, and I took the I, and then the S. I made a snake. Is the you know you're gonna bite the I, you know, making it colorful because that's what the right brain likes. And he said to me, Mrs. Craft, do you have an easier word? And they said, well, that would be, ah, uh, Jeremy, I don't Aww. think. <laughs> so they said, you know what, though? What's the hardest word that you could think of that you don't think you could spell? And he said, Lamborghini. <laughs> so I had to look it up. Lamborghini has an H in it. But because we know that the long-term memory is the right brain, the right brain loves color, picture, weird, emotion. And so what we did is we took those letters in Lamborghini and we made an emotion for each one. The H in Lamborghini was the smoke coming out of the tailpipe. And, and then we looked up and he could spell it forwards and backwards. So when he went to his second grade classroom after this pull out spelling session, which everybody knows should be remedial, he, um, his teacher, his wonderful teacher, Mrs. Wilson said, okay, Jeremy, what did you learn today? He said, I learned how to spell Lamborghini. He said, no, that's not a second grade word. Uh -huh. I'll show, he said, let me show you on the blackboard. And of course, they filled up the whole blackboard. And all the kids said, we want to go to that smarter spelling class. 
Wasn't that exciting? That's what we can do. <laughs> Photographic memory is awesome. We can remember multiplication facts in just a second by putting emotion right on the number. Now, there are many other ways that are close, but they have the number up here. here. The number goes in the left brain, the picture in the right, and then they're having to skip count or find ways. But the way the brain works, it, if you pull up the, the problem and the picture on it gives you the answer. As so we always say for spelling, the boys loved it. They loved making their spelling cards. We always got a great growth in spelling, but it was uh, with green stuff, brown stuff, bodily fluids, a lot of blood. So if they don't remember a letter, just have it blood. <laughs> they get it every time. They cannot forget it. <laughs> Blood and bring something up. <laughs> exactly. Girls will put flowers on, but I hardly ever had any girls in my in my classes because we know three times more boys than girls have learning disabilities. Yeah. And Dr. Jacqueline Story in her studies found that three times boys have a three times more need for essential fatty acids of fish oil than girls. Wow. Autism Asperger's is three times more boys than girls. Oils, so she's right that oils are a big, big part of it, and we talk about that in that biology behavior also. But it has to start with the gut because that's where the, the serotonin is made. Well, we have another uh, person here. She says, I have 12 kids with ADHD and my husband, too. All right. So she has a busy household, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard to tell when you have 12 if it's really ADHD or just 12 kids, no doubt. <laughs> But um, I would highly encourage you to um, come to the biology behavior class. We have a um, about 10, maybe 7 to 10 books that you can get at the library that you can begin to learn what you can change in terms of diet. In other words, for them, for some reason, either because there is steroid antibiotic use or just plain lots of sugar, they, um, they react too, too much to um, pancakes. And syrup, even if it's with sometimes moms say, but we get gluten free pancakes and organic syrup. And I say, I wish the yeast cared. <laughs> he says, sugar is sugar. <laughs> yes, carbs are carbs and it feeds it. It's like having mm -hmm. like having a little bit of beer as far as it's concerned. It just it just activates. So um, I would say to her, watch see how much sugar are they doing the box cereals with oatmeal is wonderful. Of course, eggs is wonderful. Adjust. Um, it's it's going to be diet. We use supplements to get a child out of a hole, and we watch a little bit of the diet, never taking away all sugar and carbs because that's not sustainable, mm -hmm. and the body doesn't need it if you're using the supplements. But for if it's really everybody in the family, I would look in the pantry first and and see if we can't make some changes there, and then get some look at that, and the supplements make sense to you, and they're all available at the health food store. Um, then get. You work with only one child at a time, so you can get to see. See, if you would work with all whole group, you wouldn't know what was doing what. Too many variables. Just one child at a time. She said it's not just hyperactive behavior, but living in their own world. Huh. Same source of uh, mm -hmm. where it's coming from. Yep. Good. Oh, she said, she said I have all your materials. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> then what? Don't tell her to be sure. We love to hear from people who have our materials or don't. Either way, because we can just give them such sometimes just two or three lines of advice help. If she, but so either way, have her give her. I'd like to look at that message on an email and help her think some things through um, because it could be various things. You know, well water. You know, if it's all twelve. In other words, you see, I would be looking for a common cause. I bet she is too. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. She says three do not have it. Yeah, I would I would suggest that you go ahead and email Diane and 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 see if y'all can't work through this. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Diane would be more there than happy to work with you. Absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah. That's uh, that's what we do all day, and it's fun. It's tremendous fun. And you know what? I don't uh, look for myself to find all the answers. God gets with me, and He just has books fall out the fall out all of my bookshelf that are the answer. I mean, it is wonderful. So. We'll have that. He all remember. He says, "Ask and you receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be opened for you." Not ask and maybe you'll receive. No, <laughs> we'll receive. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, 
Um, I think that we covered the, that, that Pamela is going to be the one representing this. My goal, mm -hmm. if I can, is to be at the table to help answer that, but otherwise we will have three certified learning specialists. And, and we are, our aim, well, like Anne, Anne said, our aim is the, is the family. So that will be a lot of fun. And we're just so appreciate HEAV. You guys really are on the cutting edge of what you do and, and a, a real example to many other conventions. So we're just so looking forward to being there. Thank you, Sandra. You are a great interviewer. Oh, <laughs> you were really easy to interview. <laughs> well, I believe my helper here put, posted in the uh, comments for us uh, the workshops that Pamela Gates will be presenting this year. Solutions for Struggling Learners, uh, Photographic Memory Power, Is It Dysgraphia, and the Biology of Behavior. And you can go to heav.org forward slash convention forward slash workshops, and you can find this all there along with descriptions. And also you'll be able to find the, um, we have a whole little table set up so you can see what the schedule is and when all the workshops are and so you make sure you actually get to them. And of course, if you miss them, we do um, Recording. We record all of these so you can mm -hmm. get the MP3s afterwards. And um, Anne says, Diane, you are such a gem and you really are. Thank you so much for being on with us today. A pleasure. Everyone who is watching, thank you for joining us. And I really hope we see you in June. Please, if you haven't registered, go now to heav.org forward slash convention and get yourself registered. I'll see you all in June. I will be all over that convention. So if you bump into me, please say hi. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> thank you, Diane.